Today I'm going to tell you about the glories, the old school charm of Sorrento with its glorious coastline, stunning food, very particular style in music and also the scandal. Sorrento is a town on the Bay of Naples in Italy. It has been a long time tourist destination through its history along with the rest of the Amalfi Coast. It's close to Pompeii and the now dormant volcano Vesuvius. Early habitation began in the 8th century BC and it was an Etruscan crossing point. Sorrento then became a Greek town as part of the wider Magna Graecia in southern Italy with its temples dedicated to Athena and the Sirens, the three mermaids at Punta Campanella and these would tempt passing seafarers with their singing. Ulysses apparently resisted the song of the Sirens by having his crew tie him to the ship. The other obvious advantages of Punta Campanella are its impressive views, secluded coves, Roman ruins and of course it's a nature reserve. The Roman Republic town name was Sorrentum. This was an important trading hub and also a prosperous resort town from the outset, welcoming affluent and powerful people who built luxurious clifftop villas with stunning ocean views. Sorrentum was famous also for its agricultural produce, namely at that time wine and oil. As the Western Roman Empire fell, Sorrento went into decline as it was attacked in turn by the Ostrogoths, the Byzantium Eastern Roman Empire, the Duchy of Amalfi, repeated attacks from Saracens. Sorrento became part of the nearby Duchy of Naples, but later became independent as the Duchy of Sorrento. The Lombard Duchy of nearby Benevento attacked Sorrento in 839. Sorrento forces then joined the anti-Saracen leagues at the battles of Licosa and Ostia. Sorrento was ruled by Robert Giscard as the south of Italy was overrun by Normans. In 1137, Sorrento was conquered by Roger II of Sicily. During the Angevin period, Sorrento's tourism revived again for nobles for artists, writers and poets who all marvelled at its natural beauty. Now for a tale of love, sex, beauty and scandal. The Bagni della Regina Giovanna is a secluded beach set amongst the ruins of a Roman villa. It's got multiple names and is also known as Queen Giovanna Beach and was enjoyed by Queen Giovanna d'Angio Queen Joanna I of Naples, who spent her summers in Sorrento. Legend said she took her numerous lovers for amorous encounters on the beach, after which her soldiers would then subsequently drown them to prevent a scandal. During the 16th century, Sorrento was un under Spanish rule. Its agricultural produce now expanded to include the citrus fruits, the lemons, for which it is now very famous. In 1558, Sorrento was sacked by Ottoman raiders led by Dragut. Ottoman attackers frequently took slaves. In 1656, a plague struck Sorrento. Late era Spanish rule saw grim economic decline. By the 19th century, Sorrento bustled again from agriculture tourism and trade. King Ferdinand II opened a road connecting Sorrento to Castellamare di Stabia. Many people claim that the grounds of Hotel Vittoria were built on the site of an ancient imperial Roman building. The short-lived old noisy steam-powered funicola service which linked Sorrento's Hotel Vittoria to the port below was soon replaced by roads and an elevator. After 1861, Sorrento was officially annexed 
to the new kingdom of Italy. Sorrento was a popular tourist destination for well-heeled European travellers in the 19th century. It attracted visitors who sought a more romantic destination with stunning natural beauty. Over the years, Sorrento has welcomed Lord Byron, John Keats, Johann Wolfgang of Goethe, Henrik Ibsen, Walter Scott, Charles Dickens, Richard Wagner and Friedrich Nietzsche. The exiled Russian and Soviet writer Maxim Gorky lived in Sorrento during his exile between 1921 and 1928. So what can you do in Sorrento? Go for a passeggiata, maybe an ice cream or a coffee in Cozzo Italia. Enjoy lunch in Piazza Tasso. Of course try the seafood. Try Palle Rizzo. This is a Neapolitan version of Sicilian arancini. The fried rice balls. The Amalfi Coast is famous for its lemons. Try it in any of its forms, be it limoncello, gnocchi alla sorrentina, or delizia al limone, lemon cake. Observe the restoration activities at the Vallone dei Mulini, the Valley of the Mills. The famous Amalfi Drive connects Sorrento, Positano and Amalfi. You're also very close to Pompeii, so you should seriously consider a trip there. Or perhaps Capri, if you have the time. And Neapolitan music is very popular across all of Italy. It has a very recognisable romantic style. Sorrento is featured in some famous songs. For example, Torna a Sorrento, Come Back to Sorrento, by the De Curtis brothers. This is a really famous song and it's been sung by a who's who of singers. Beniamino Gigli, Bing Crosby, Bono, Dean Martin, Elvis Presley, Enrico Caruso, Frank Sinatra, Jose Carreras, Luciano Pavarotti, Mario Lanza, Placido Domingo, Connie Francis and apparently Meatloaf. Caruso is a really famous song written by the famous late Italian singer-songwriter Lucio Dalla. It is dedicated to Enrico Caruso, a world-famous Italian tenor who was born to a poor family in Naples. Lucio Dalla was inspired to write the song Caruso as he stayed at the Excelsior Vittoria Hotel in Sorrento. He learned the story of the ailing tenor who spent time there before later dying in Naples. The song Caruso tells of the pain and the yearning of an ailing man before a young student. The lyrics contain subtle references to people and places in Caruso's life and they also use some Neapolitan expressions. If you've enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. That way you can enjoy more of this content Thank you. Click here for some more videos you may be interested in.